Hello, it's Sarah. Just making sure my camera stays plugged in. It's got a wonky cord. Anywho, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm um, going to be painting today. Figured I'd turn on the camera. I've been working on some of these projects that I shared in my previous video from um, Tracy Moreau. And I got an idea about what to use them for. These are the... the uh, packet says bees and daisies ornaments and there's these little bee dangles bee charm dangles at the bottom and they have a hole i got joe to cut these for me these are a bit different we did it kind of like we cut a separate oval and the separate bee scap and just like stacked them i think these actually are etched like it goes in i don't know anywho i love them they're super cute and all of a sudden, instead of just making the dangle, I, w I was thinking I could make little wind chimes. Okay, so that came to my mind. And I know at Michael's right now, they have kids' projects, little kid projects that you can paint, little wood. I almost bought one yesterday, but I decided to change it up. Um, they had unicorns or doggies or something with like four little metal tubes that you would hook on here with wire or something. And -da -da -ding, it would make a, um, a wind chime out of it. So these have no holes. That's the other thing. I'm going to have Joe, I might enlarge them a tiny bit and have him let the glow forge make me some holes. But that being said, today I am painting, so I'm just going to put those aside. They could be magnets, but the reason I'm loving this is this, this is this one specifically, Just Be is really hits home for me and this is a phone stand i've prepped this already i still have to do this will work up so quick but i want to blow up the paper page the dictionary page that she gave or i might just use a different one i don't know just be is very much about for me it's a very important thing about being present i'm going to paint and talk so i have a couple brushes out here I'm going to go ahead and paint this little, um, the center of this bee scap. This is the other, I think this is a free downloadable, this one. So I'll put in the description box. This was a free downloadable, www.tracymoreau.net, and you can print this out. Um, she has on her YouTube channel the tutorial for this project that I painted along with her, be kind and these three-dimensional bees I had Joe make me and I'm just going to replicate this bee scap so I'm using the directions that I already have to paint that so I'm just going to go ahead and like I said it's the directions are right on her channel um, if anyone would like to do this but at, as I paint this I will tell you that so I Googled, um, not Googled, I went on YouTube and I looked for wind chimes, beaded wind chimes. I should be using a um, flat brush for this. This will do the trick though. It just makes it, the, the smaller, what is this? Oh, that's the edge of that. The smaller the brush, the more ridges you can have in the, in the paint. It's just my own little... Um, I, I was ready to paint the lines of the B scap and I didn't get out of flat. But anyway, um, I'm going to make, I think I might get into wire wrapping. It's just another thing on my journey of crafts that I have not tried yet. I have lots of beads and I have wire. I already, I've tried some wire work. Um, I've made like names I have it's around here somewhere in my craft room see I change I move things around and then because I change crafts so often I might as well do this one while I'm chatting with you guys let me come down and you, I mean at least you can watch did you see how it did it just get dark for you guys because my plug okay it's good okay good um I, I might need a new camera I just use a Canon Vixia um, what is it called? Like a little video camera. But anyway, 
Um, I've seen a couple channels that are really still up and running. Some of the videos were from like five, ten years ago. Some of them are just put on from bead sellers, like, uh, what was the name of the one? Beadaholic is still in, you know, they're still making up-to-date videos, like, in the present day. But some of them were still from, like, about um, ten years ago. It doesn't matter. But if I, I want to communicate and ask questions and stuff, because if I'm learning, you know, I want to be able to... Um, ask the creator sometimes I you know I get disappointed in myself that I don't answer a lot of your comments most of your comments are very just sweet and they're just saying hi and um, I do I try to answer but um anywho I would love to go to an in-person class but you know YouTube is excellent for that okay so that's good enough I'm going to go ahead and paint this right now uh, using the directions for my Be Kind project that I already did because this is another one I was even thinking I'm just gonna paint them because it's just practice and they're cute but I'm gonna come up again too I if he put holes random holes like maybe even just two or three I could wire wrap the edges of this with some beads and then make bead dangles like I don't know you know how like I like to kind of put my own spin on craft ideas like because I did mixed media mosaics with polymer clay then I went into regular mosaics like then I started combining bead anyway I combine a lot of different crafts painting is my original the OJ of all my crafting um, you know what I think I'm going to do? And I did find some warm white. Um, Tracy Moreau loves warm white. I was using light buttermilk. And it's quite a difference. I mean, this is the white. You can definitely tell. But I found it yesterday when I went out um, looking for beads. So I'm going to do this. But I'm just going to undercoat the flowers. Because this process, I'm trying to get the um, plastic off, is going to cause me to possibly run over the tracing and I don't want to really lose the I traced it on Ugh. usually if you do this against the uh, grain it comes off there's a trick you, if you just take a new paint like I bought these two look, look I got blush pink which I just thought was such a cute, pretty color but if you go so usually it comes right off um, I got melon just love it. I might get this kind of color for my nails this time. I gotta go tomorrow. And I got Coral Blush, which I already opened. They're similar, but they're very similar. Anywho, all right, this one just doesn't want to, so I'm gonna have to use a pokey tool and open it that way. So I have the beads and I have some wire. So I went through my stash last night. I might as well just show you. For say for these little bee scaps. I went and bought a bunch of beads. Uh, Where did I put them? But I pulled these from my stash. So there's a couple like this, especially for these. So let me move these out of the way. Look at that. Put that, and I mean, it's not going to be a sun catcher because crystals would be the way to go. I mean, there's a lot of crystals in here, but like this, this might work for a sun catcher. You know, this is kind of like a leaf bead. You know, I could put that in there. I just, and then this was a cute one, and I've had this in my stash. This is a glasswork bead, like somebody blew it out of glass and it's a bead but like that's cute right maybe not for this one so I went through and just found anything that looked kind of beehivey bee skeppy look at this one gorge um, and then I bought I have a couple dangles now this would definitely go on more of a I have only a couple of these shapes um, I have two crosses 
I have a snowflake, which would be super cute. A snowflake shaped crystal. Guys, I've had these forever. Like I just went through my stash and started pulling random. I think this might be Tim Holtz. It might even be plastic. I have a heart crystal. So look at this one. Just a little daisy bead. So it makes me happy when I go through and I have plenty, but I did still go actually. And Michael's had, they weren't on sale, but I put them somewhere, you guys. Uh, I know where, right here. They were on clearance. So I went to the bead section. It wasn't on sale, but there were some on clearance. These are the, this wire I've had. I have it in my stash. This is 16 gauge wire. And what color would you consider this? Copper. This is silver. And I had another one. See, I did all this last night. But this, oh, here it is, this one. This is more like a, a rosy tone, aluminum. And this is a 12 gauge, so really thick. But what you do is you make your frame. So maybe I make a heart frame out of the thick wire. And then you hammer it. And it gets flat and harder, like it makes it keep its shape. Let me come up and I'll show you what I got to do this. So I had some of this, but then I went and had a look and most of what I got was on clearance. Um, it was either two or three dollars, which is definitely a price drop because a lot of it's six and seven dollars. So this is, I had this in my stash, perfect color for this bee scap. Now these are a little darker, so I would want to use the, um, oops, I don't want to put it in paint, the more amber tones. Um, but look at this, I found this three-piece set that I probably got, it was a free gift from Brightling Beads. But I want to practice wire wrapping. So I could make a pendant out of the heart and maybe earrings out of the, you know, and it would be matching. Um, I did get, some amethyst yesterday and I might want to go back it was five bucks where did I put it sorry you guys I thought I was just gonna paint but then my mind goes elsewhere but anyway let me just show you this was all two and three dollars so look at that these are little crosses look at this gorgeousness um, check beads these are check fire polished I mean, I can see the honey. It looks like honey to me. Then I got two strands of this kind of really e-bead size amber colors with a mix um, of the check beads. These are glass. I got some orange beads, which I might save these for um, bracelets because I never really work. I have two packs of this, I think. I don't usually work with orange. Orange, yellow. Um, have not been on my radar for years. I got more Check Fire Polished. They're kind of like the same color as this in the bigger size. There's an orange one. So anyway, lots to play with. And then I, of course, pulled what I had. I had these from um, making bead mosaics like my cross, which was just here literally a second ago right here so I was doing bead mosaics remember using a epo epoxy sculpt as the uh, glue and then you just put beads you stick beads down into it and then I used my gold leafing pen but anyway these little beads are are great for that so I'm gonna be playing around with that so like I said I think I'm gonna have Joe and what I would do is just pull out my bead mat and lay everything out like in in a way that appeals to me and have them ready to go because I would string them using wire and crimp beads instead of um, just the elastic the way I've been doing my bracelets so it would be a bit different Alexa turn on the craft fan so just FYI two guys in New Jersey and maybe all the way down the East Coast is um, that's why I'm in the house today because it is uh, the air quality is not good. Excuse me, there are fires burning in um, Canada, and 
so it's just you know I have asthma and I just don't and allergies and I just don't need any other complications so I'm just gonna stay in and paint today and I can hear it like my voice feels affected so I'm gonna paint these little daisies just using this is a number two round a Jasonia short touch so I'll come back down I'm just gonna get I, I didn't put this whole pattern is mostly leaves and stuff I didn't even put that on there because I just want to be able to paint the b-scap and I'm going to be outlining these with um, the Signo Uniball very thin uh, here it is this is what Tracy likes to use the Signo Uniball 0.38 so it's like a very fine tip gel pen um, and if you look on this one, see those black lines are with a pen. And they're around the bee's wings. They're actually on the bee scup too. It's fun. It's just a, and that's what I mean about mixing up your loves, you know. I love doing pen work and um, painting, like anything I can combine together. <laughs> so this would be like painting, beading, wire wrapping you name it um, the just be thing though I just think it's such a great I don't even know if I told you this but in 12-step recovery like when you do the steps part of my process is to actually pause and AA they say when agitated or doubtful um, and I like that makes sense to me but it can be when you're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, halt. It can be anytime your spirit, so my spirit meaning my emotions, don't feel at peace, do nothing, just be. Feel the feeling, what comes up, feel the fear, feel the, feel the anxiety, listen to your body, figure out where it's coming from, you know, I mean, if, especially if you're, if you can, if you have a second to just stop, stop your thoughts and focus on your breath, bring yourself back to a peaceful feeling, and then make a decision. But if, for me specifically, my automatic pilot never would just be, it would be do, 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 move, do something. Oh, I like, they say, in program they say, don't just do something, sit there. Because um, life moves very quickly and I'm trying to be present. That's it. I'm just trying to be present, live each moment as it comes. And do you see how my voice gets calmer and slower when I do this, literally? That is why my channel is called My Serenity Crafts because this process of painting, focusing on this moment, what I'm doing, always gives me a peaceful feeling of calm. You ha I have to slow down in order to do this. I mean, or else it would just be crazy. <laughs> but um, I didn't really realize it. I actually must have because I named my channel my serenity crafts right I knew it was giving me peace um, anyway not everyone has what we have a creative side or a craft room to go lots of people have stuff but they're not always healthy options you know when life happens and you feel feelings that aren't comfortable you want to push them away instead of embrace them so I'm just learning to embrace my feelings and not let them control me and run my life the way they used to my inner teenager used to run my life and my inner child used to be so hurt and lonely and so by just being present and acknowledging them I get to 
act as a grown-up now. And I think the 12-step programs are excellent for teaching anyone who struggles with uh, emotional maturity um, because they feel they don't feel they've had a voice or you know just life gets too the demands of our society are a lot I mean kids are getting addicted to social media in a way that's super unhealthy 2020 just had a story about it and you know awareness is the key for me you know I can't change it but I can I only have control over myself and what I participate in or don't participate in I have a problem with um, what's it called Candy Crush I'm on like I think I must be going to be done soon the whole thing like I might be close to completing the whole thing because I'm so high up but it, it's just mindless it is an escape and I, I mean it's a it's a an innocent one I guess right but it, it isn't because instead of feeling my feelings and working on I don't know I could be more present um, I keep I, I don't like anyway I don't want to talk about it <laughs> we all have stuff right so um I'm sorry I didn't even realize that I might not be in the shot I will finish up these daisies and then I'm going to show you how I I don't need to really because I'm telling you Tracy Moreau is such a gift to decorative artists because she has a YouTube channel where she teaches not all when it first started decorative painting you would have to go to a convention and in person class a lot of teachers would also come and do seminars at your um, home group at your like not home group but your um, chapter of decorative painters and that's what used to happen I painted a lot with um, my chapter but anywho nowadays and not everyone does them zoom classes are definitely getting more popular but this is YouTube guys it's free she has an awesome website and um, where you can purchase the, the patterns, the pack, the, the wood. She sells the wood. I'm just putting my husband to use. He's learning how to vectorize things and I don't know. It gives him practice to, to do the program, the laser cutting program. We have a Glowforge. He just got another one too, a CNC machine or something like that. It's a bit different. It's not a laser. It's like a, my nose itches. It's like a, um, I don't even know what it is. It's huge. It's like a, it's like a cage. It has like, I don't know. And then the, I guess it's like a, a router, um, which if you know what that is, it's a tool that kind of, It gouges out the. It's kind of like a lathe, I guess. It would be. I don't know. I'm not a tool expert. Anywho, he's really enjoying that. So um, I'm lucky. I'm very lucky because he. If I ask him, he will make me. Uh, you know what? I think I'm supposed to do the centers too. Because um, it'll just undercoat. And then the top coat will be more um, bright. I think even the leaves I can do. You know what, though? It, uh, yeah, I guess I'll do it. Because all the work I'm going to do um, on the B scap itself, I'm going to go over. I'm going to hit these, definitely hit them. 
I guess I just didn't want to lose them completely. I think I could do the center again. And Tracy's a good, she's a very good painter. She doesn't uh, use a, a stylus to, like we're different for sure. She uses the the Uniball Signo to trace her, her design because the, the tip is so much finer. I just read that and it's like, oh, okay. Because I don't always read everything, like, you know. That's that automatic pilot. <laughs> I'm starting to learn a lot about myself, like, um, just reading the directions and not skipping steps that that was me I skipped the steps I you know and I can't learn if I'm not willing you know open-minded to see how someone else does it yeah I do it fine the way I do it is great but I might learn something that actually could help if I was just open-minded and willing and patient enough to just read the directions. Like, I just skip to the good stuff. You know, I don't do that when I read a book, though. I definitely read, I don't skip to the end. <laughs> I do not like to know the ending, actually. I want to be surprised. I like that part. But, yeah, when it comes to this stuff, I think I know enough that I can, you know, just jump, jump to wherever and it's like well you just missed all those other steps so you know it's not going to be the same anywho so now i'm going to use this because i i went out of the lines but who cares okay so that's all i want to do for now let me put my beads away <coughs> so each of these is a row right and it's also dimensional each one is because a b-skep is actually round um and they're bumps so these little bumps represent the they bump out too so like these little curves of the hole are part part of that excuse me i have the like burps or the hiccups let me take my uh, so i'm going to you it says base it in deep ochre and then shade the right side of the opening oh i'll do that later a float or two that's still wet so i'll do that horizontal strokes of sunny day slash saffron yellow i have sunny day i believe these are new colors too so tracy definitely introduces me to new colors because i tend to use what i have which because i have so much um but yeah like i said i wanted to go get <coughs> excuse me so this is sunny day beautiful color yellow and uh, let's see shade between the rows with floats of asphaltum so I'm just gonna go ahead and use let's see this is a number four round and I'm gonna see how this feels and works for me and I'm just gonna pull I'm loading my brush. I know, let me come up because I don't think he can see me. Okay, good. So I'm loading it. There was a little bit of water in my brush because I want it to be slick. But if you look at this one, it's kind of choppy. You know, it's not perfect and I love it. Like, I love it. So I want to do what she says. <laughs> I don't just want to do it my way. I think I want to start at the bottom and work my way up. One of the one side is going to be shaded and one side is going to be dark. That is so bright. I'll bet you that's too. Um, let's see. It says add texture. So that I think is too. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off just because I don't think that's what she wanted me to do. And this is why watching her video would probably be super helpful because I painted it a while ago the other one and I want it to look like what she wants it to look like so I'm gonna 
you know what let me go down in size to this is a number I don't even know it's a rigor I put it in water but I'm gonna I think let me go to this one I don't know. I don't know if it's supposed to be solid. And all of this over here is going to be dark anyway. So like I don't even need to put the yellow in between there because that's it would be shaded. It would be shade like darker in there. This is this is I think I probably do need the bigger brush. I'm going to get the bigger one. And I'll just not load it as much. Because I overload. This brush holds a lot of paint. So let's just keep... By the time I'm done putting all the shading in, it'll look fine. So I'm, I'm getting, I'm overthinking it, which is another thing that I do. That kind of went down a little. I just want to straighten it up a little. Um, but I do, I often overthink things. And keeping it simple has really been a blessing for me because I get in my own head and nothing's happening like nothing is happening if I just let go let go of the control and just let let what happens happens something is happening but you know what I mean I mean it looks be skeppy if you ask me and I'm just doing one side at a time and then I'll go back and do Probably the center is where it would be the brightest anyway. Not the sides. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on though. And pretty soon it'll it'll look be skeppy, don't worry. I know you're so worried right now, aren't you? <laughs> Cause like that's a leaf all this is going to be shaded and much darker I like it I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it like that let it dry and then I'll do this one this one has a lot more free space so I'm just gonna not push as hard in the middle I want it to be the darkest so I'm gonna go light push light I don't know why, but it didn't really work. I'm going to start this side. Uh, it's going to be shaded all around there. All darker. So let's see. I just want to keep it even. I'm a fast painter too, so that's kind of good in this instance because I'm, I, it doesn't give me a lot of time to overthink. Just get it on there. I was kind of trying to match up the edges because there is a, um, a ruffle on the edge of the wood, like a, a wood ruffle type thing. But... I'm just doing it according to my brush and it'll save because there's they're very thin it'll save me I'm just going right over those um, leaves I 
And guess what? I'm not Tracy. Mine won't look like Tracy's. It'll it'll be her design, but it'll have Sarah on it. So let's see if that looks kind of similar, right? Alright, now let's see what the next part says. Shade between the rows with floats of thin dysphaltum and then again with thin soft black. Mix sunny day and warm white and add highlights to the hive by putting a smaller stroke on each set of highlights. On each set of, with multiple floats. Oh, anyway, I read it wrong. But, okay, I know what I'm doing. This is the asphaltum. I think this one's probably dry. She did, I think I want to go under each one. I'm just going to use my flat brush, I mean, I'm sorry, my angle brush. And I'm going to load the corner. The other thing, she uses a, what is it called? A medium. A Joe Sonia glazing medium, I think. But this is water. I'm just using water to float with. This is a half inch angle. You could go smaller. And I probably should because the bigger the brush, the wider my flute. And she does kind of concentrate. Um, I'm going to go a little smaller. I just know me. I know that I'm a heavy hand and I, uh, my flutes are very wide. So I'm trying to keep it narrow and just really hit underneath I think you get the idea so I just wanted to come on and say hi and let you know what I'm up to um, like I said I am planning on doing some wire wrapping. My voice is going. Doing some wire wrapping and uh, making some little wind chimey things. So I will be back with my beads um, ready to share my process and how I'm going to do that. And for those of you in South Jersey area, please stay safe and um, See, I think maybe my voice is affected by the air quality. Um, yeah, stay safe. Stay inside and make something great. Alright, love you guys. Thanks for watching.